BYU Cougar baseball is on the air as the Batcats get ready to take the field. The Rockets want deep left field. Left fielder looks up. That is a grand slam home run. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now to get you ready for Cougar Baseball, here's Brent Norton. Well, good afternoon, Cougar fans. Uh, live from Larry Miller Field here in Provo along with Tuckett Slade. Looking forward to a opening game of the West Coast Conference here in 2019. BYU against the Gonzaga Bulldogs. And these two teams uh, really have kind of developed, I won't call them bitter rivals, but arch rivals in the conference uh, Going back a couple of years ago, and and some of the uh, the battles they've had on the field, uh, Tuck, and looking forward to a great uh, a great series. Yeah, it really has become a rivalry. All the games have been very competitive and a lot of fun. They've, all the games have really mattered, which makes it even better. But a great competition. Really looking forward to a good weekend. Had a chance to sit down with Coach Mike Littlewood just a few moments ago, and talk with him about uh, tonight's ball game, and uh, we'll play for that for you right now. We are here with Head Coach Mike Littlewood uh, right before the. Uh, Started this three-game series with Gonzaga. Coach, 12-3 uh, and three in the preseason. Uh, probably couldn't ask for a, hot, a whole lot more than that. Just tremendous preseason. And now you get into the games in the conference and start out with a preseason favorite, Gonzaga. Always a great matchup when you play these guys. And uh, looking forward to a great three-game set this weekend in Provo. Yeah, I mean, we get off to a, a start with Gonzaga, who's a really, really good team. Pick to finish first, like you said. But, uh, you know, every team in our league is good this year. We talked about this on Tuesday, I believe, that uh, eight, eight or t- nine teams out of ten are are have a winning record right now, and not just a winning record. I mean, they've won ten games. So, our leagues our leagues up, uh, which is good. Every every week's a dogfight. Um, I feel like we're we're battle tested. We've been on the road and won and won in, in a bunch of different ways. And so, looking for a, a hot start uh, tonight against Gonzaga. And of course, you couldn't pick a better guy than Jordan Wood, uh, one of your senior leaders. The kid's a bulldog, a, a real competitor, and. And he's the guy you want out there on Thursday nights. Yeah, we do. I mean, he, his ERA is under two right now. <clears throat> Excuse me, throwing great. He just uh, he sets the tone for us. You know that uh, he's going to give you 100%. I mean, there hasn't been many outings that he's had that have been poor outings. I mean, and even when he doesn't have his best stuff, he's going to find a way to, to get outs. And so, um, you know, we feel comfortable handing him the ball, uh, getting us off to a good start. We need to swing it tonight facing a left-hander Wells, uh, kind of a fastball slider guy. Uh, his first start only has seven, seven and two thirds innings this year, but um, I think that they might even go staff night, have a short leash on uh, all their guys, and and um, just whoever's effective, they'll leave them in a little bit. So we may see a bunch of different pitchers, but we need to, in order to do that, we need to get to this starter quick. Of course, pitching's all about throwing strikes. You've talked about that this year with this staff, and and just guys pounding the zone. And uh, boy, what a difference it makes when you when you make guys earn their way on. It sure does. I mean, our, our philosophy that way is pitch to contact, be aggressive in the zone, um, and it's easier said than done a lot of times. But we want, we want to make teams beat us. We don't want to give them, like you said, we don't want to give them bases, um, hand them runs. And, uh, you know, that's the, the, the main way you can do that is just by throwing the ball over the plate and making them hit it. It, it sounds simple, but, uh, you know, when you're out on the mound in front of a crowd and facing a hitter, it's a, it's a little bit more challenging. But our pitchers are doing a great job with that this year. You know, pretty dynamic defense on your side also. Got a bunch of shortstops out there in the infield. You can tell guys that can really pick it and throw, have good arms, and also outfield, tremendous speed. So you got to feel really good about defensively and what you've done so far. Uh, you know, I love our defense, our individual defense. We do. We have four four high school shortstops uh, playing the infield tonight. Um, they're not all at short. You know, Brian Sue's at, at first base, and he was a high school shortstop, and DJ McNew was a high school and JC shortstop before he came here. Of course, Carson Matthews was a high school shortstop starting for us at short. And then Jackson Clough was also a high school shortstop up in Boise. So um, love those guys. Love what they, the athleticism they bring. Um, and the, and our outfield, I don't think there's probably a faster outfield in the country uh, with uh, Mitch McIntyre and Danny Jelilich and Brock Hale out there. So we feel good about our defense. We talked a little bit about um, staying engaged with, engaged with plays until they're over on defense, communicating a little bit better. There's always ways you can improve. Uh, but but overall, I, I love our defense, knock on wood. Well, it's worth watching Jelich run. I mean, that big body, 6'4", 215, and I'm telling you, he can he can get it going. You know, we, we get him on, on a couple of drag bunts from home to first. A good time's 4'2", four, 4'3", four, and, and he's running three nines, th- three three eights down to first base. That means when he makes contact from the t- with the, the bat on the ball and then he touches first, that's 3.9 seconds, and that's that's getting down there in the hurry. If I mean he's beaten out a couple routine ground balls to second base this year, uh, and I think 
it's on the scouting report now, so so guys are infielders are playing a, a couple steps closer. If they don't and they take their time or they a, a small bobble, and he's going to be safe every time. He's a real threat at the top of our lineup. Okay, Coach, good luck. It uh, should be a great series. Uh, looking forward to it this weekend in Provo, and good way to start the uh, conference season. Absolutely. Thanks, Brent. That was BYU baseball head coach Mike Littlewood. For lineups and the first pitch, let's rejoin Brent Norton. All right, back here at Larry Miller Field. We're ready for baseball. It's Jordan Wood on the hill. First pitch to Ernie Yake is a little bit low for ball one. Yake will lead it off. He'll be followed by Guthrie Morrison, the center fielder, and then Austin Penarini. There's a ground ball hit right at McNew, the second baseman for the Cougars. He bobbles and comes up and makes the throw for the out. So one man up, one man down for Gonzaga here in the first inning. We've just begun at Larry Miller Field. Brent Norton along with Tuckett Slade. First uh, conference game of the year tonight in Provo. Bunch of games scheduled tomorrow night, and we'll go over those as we go throughout the game tonight. But a good time to get off to a good start for the Cougars. First pitch uh, to uh, Guthrie Morrison is down low. Morrison is a junior out of Edmond, Edmonds, Washington. Center fielder hitting 302 on the year. There's a fastball down a little bit low again. Defensively, the Cougars have Sue at first, DJ McNew at shortstop, Jackson Clough at third base. There's another pitch. That, boy, just missing, not by much. And the count goes to 3-0. and oh, As Morrison steps back in. 3-1 pitch. That's over for a strike. Cougar uh, round out the infield with... Um, Carson Matthews. Left field is Mitch McIntyre, Danny Jelilich in center, and Brock Hill in right field. Noah Hill behind the plate, and of course, Jordan Wood, the senior right hander who has been outstanding. I can't remember over the three years he's been here, too many bad outings out of Jordan Wood. Yeah, I mean, he's been just the bulldog of the staff, especially the last two years, has taken over that, 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 that ace role and been fantastic with it. 3-2 pitch hit right out at Matthews, the shortstop. He gobbles it up. He throws the first. And quickly, two men down for Gonzaga here in the first inning. That'll bring up Austin Pinarini. And that's a that's a big out right there, Brent, because he got 3-0 to that batter and on three close misses and then battled back to full and, and got that out. You don't want to give up a, a, a walk here in the first inning and kind of get them going. Pinarini steps in, hitting 292, no home runs, seven RBIs for the senior out of Everett, Washington. Left-handed hitter in the first pitch outside, ball one. Umpires tonight's ball game, Sean Rakos got a pretty tight zone back there so far. Eric Colden at first, John Bostwick at second, Tyler Ferguson at third base, and there's a swing and a foul tip. And the count goes to a ball and a strike on Austin Pinarini. That'll wake up Noah Hill real quick. A little foul ball right off the face mask. Yeah, when it when it hits hard enough that it will actually blows your mask off, you know it was a pretty yeah. direct shot. Exactly. Joined by the WTV here tonight. Pitch a little bit inside, two and one. Also on uh, BYU Radio XM 143 and 107.9 FM here locally. Two and one, here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, good off speed. And the count evens up at two balls and two strikes. Yeah, really good change up right there. If, if Wood's gonna throw that to, to lefties, it makes it real tough for them to hit. Very cool evening here in Provo. I think about 40 degrees at game time. Ball hit right up the middle, right back to Wood. He's got it on one hop. He shovels the ball to Sue for the out. And Gonzaga retired in order here in the first inning. We're through a half an inning. Gonzaga, nothing. The Cougars coming to the plate on your WTV New Skin BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the New Skin BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Brent Norton. Back here with uh, Tuckett Slade as we get ready for bottom of the first. Gonzaga retired in order in their half of the inning. 
And Danny Jelilich will step in. He'll be followed by Brian Sue and then Brock Hale. Clough will bat fourth tonight, uh, the third baseman. He'll be followed by Kringlin, the DH. Jay, uh, DJ McNew will bat uh, sixth. McIntyre in left field will bat seventh. Noah Hill, the catcher, bats eighth. Carson Matthews bats ninth, and he'll play at shortstop. First pitch is a strike to Jelilich. Jelilich, the sophomore out of Laverne, California. Pitch to uh, Danny is down low. Pitcher Mason Wells. We expected to, to see Casey Legamina, who is an All-American all for Gonzaga, but now we think they're going to hold him out till tomorrow night. So Gonzaga starting a freshman out of Spokane, Mason Wells, and he comes back with a fastball over the outside corner and uh, Jelilich behind in the count, one and two. Yeah, first start in his career for the Zags and uh, coming in and pounding the zone pretty good right now. Mason Wells, the left-hander, pitches outside. Infield for Gonzaga, Nick Nyquist at first, Carson Brashears at, short, at second, Ernie Yake the shortstop, Brent Harris at third base. Behind the plate is uh, Austin Penarini. And the 2-2 pitch is down low, ball three. Left field is patrolled by Isaac Barrera, Guthrie Morrison in center, Troy Johnston in right field. On kind of a partly cloudy day today in Provo. That pitch over for a call, strike three. As Jelic goes down looking, Danny thought the pitch was outside. So one man out, we'll see the replay there, and uh, probably a little too close to take. Yeah, it's close, definitely is. But, uh, you know, you're the third, fourth batter of this game total, and you really don't know where his zone's going to be. Makes it tough. Brian Sue steps in, first pitch. 88 miles an hour from the lefty, over for a strike. Didn't really know the rotation for Gonzaga, I think, until later yesterday. Yeah, they let us know that Wells was starting today, but they still haven't told us who's starting tomorrow or Saturday, so a lot of to be announced. We assume that Legamina will go tomorrow on his normal Friday start day. Sue fouls that one off. If uh, you're familiar with collegiate baseball a lot, a lot of uh, the big time pitchers uh, like to slot into that Friday start uh, slot. And at BYU, of course, you play Thursday to start. And so a lot of times we've seen them move uh, or hold them out. There's a little looper right at the second baseman for Shears. He makes the play for the out. Two men out for the Cougars here in the first, and that will bring to the plate uh, Brock Hale, right fielder. Yeah, Wells is doing a really good job of commanding all of his pitches right now. Good start for him in his first start. Wells, 5'11", 188, Meade High School in Spokane. And the pitch to Sue is over for a strike. Well, they've still got nine inches of snow at the Patterson Complex up in uh, Spokane. What they called two, three weeks ago and said, hey, we might need to move this. And so here we are playing in Provo in a game that was normally scheduled for Spokane. Yeah, kind of crazy the way it worked out, but uh, it's nice to get another home game. Give the Cougars three uh, straight home series. Actually, four when you consider the series last week. There's a ball rocketed to right field. Right fielder going back on the track, makes the catch. Troy Johnston for the add on a ball hit very well by Brock Hill. Cougars retired in order. We're through one, no score. Gonzaga and BYU on the W.TV New Skin BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Brent Norton. We go to the second inning, no score. Jordan Woods first pitch to uh, Ryan Sullivan, a kind of a half swing strike. Ryan Sullivan really gotten off to an unbelievable start. Six home runs this year already for Sullivan. Big kid, 6'5", 230 out of Aurora, Colorado, a J.C. transfer. There's a fastball. I'm not sure if that pitch is missing down. Yeah, it's just a little down. Well, I'll tell you, that's an awfully good location. It really is. That's a great place to miss. You live there all night long, and I'm telling you, you're not going to get hurt too much. There's a pitch again down, but he swings and fouls it off, one and two the count. And Sullivan, the guy in their lineup who, hey, he struck an out. Uh, what, 18 times this year, but he's also got six home runs. So he can leave the yard if you make a mistake. 
Ball and two strikes to Ryan Sullivan, hitting 340 on the year. There's a ball hit pretty well. Brock Hale in right is there and under it and makes the catch. One man down here in the second, and Troy Johnston will step in. I was really surprised at the number of JC kids on this Gonzaga team. I, seems like they've got about six of their starters. Two or three of them are brand new kids right out of JC that moved into the lineup in a very successful year last year for Gonzaga. Yeah, they do a lot of recruiting in the JC ranks in, in throughout the career here of the coaching staff. Seems like they always have a couple guys that they fill in every single year. Pitches down low, ball one to Johnston. He's a 264 hitter, has a home run and 11 RBIs. Jordan Woods pitch outside. And Johnston's a guy who's been here for three years now, so it's a guy that we've seen a lot of over the years. Jordan, outstanding so far this year. Two wins, no losses, a 1.88 earned run average, and they're just... A little looper in the left field. McIntyre goes back a couple of steps, and he'll make the catch for out number two. Yeah, great start to Woods' outing so far. You know, he's missing down, which is a good thing. When you miss down, you can't get hurt. But uh, even though he's been in, you know, 2-1 counts, 2-0 counts, he's still getting easy flyouts and easy ground outs so far. Brett Harris steps in, third baseman. He's out of Arlington Heights, Illinois. He's another one of those transfers and the pitch is uh, a little bit inside ball one. And he normally doesn't start, but their uh, their starting shortstop got hurt at, at Texas A&M last week uh, last weekend, and they moved a third baseman Yake over to uh, to short and moved him into the lineup there at third. Yeah, Harris out of Arizona Western Community College. There's a huge uh, JC presence up in the northwest, of course, where Gonzaga is uh, located. Pitches down low, ball three. Yeah, he's just missing down on those pitches, but the umpire's been consistent with that, which as a hitter, you really like that. 3-0 pitch. That's over for a strike. Noah Hill held that a little extra yeah. second there, even though it was right over the heart of the plate. He definitely did. 3-1. Ball hit hard past McNew at second base, and that will be the first hit of the ball game. Yeah, good piece of hitting right there. Got a fastball down the middle on 3-1 and took a really good hack and hit it the other way in the four hole for a line drive single. Isaac Barrera now steps in, left fielder. Barrera, a sophomore out of Kent, Washington, 220 average. He'll bat from the left side. Young man went to Kent Ridge High School in Kent, Washington. And the first pitch over for a strike. He'll be followed by Nick Nyquist, the first baseman. No score here. Top of the second. BYU and Gonzaga. First game in the West Coast Conference uh, 2019 season. There's a little looper, and that's going to get over McNew's head into center field. Runner will advance to third base. So Gonzaga with runners at first and third on a little bit of an excuse me swing. Yeah. Just got the ball into center field for the second straight hit. Yeah, good piece hitting right there, though. Just found a way to put. It's actually interesting. He actually tried to call timeout. He's trying to ask for timeout, and the umpire didn't grant it to him, and he got the hang and change up. And was able to just loop it into right for a single, and the runner goes first to third. So they got a little action here with two outs. Nick Nyquist steps in. He is a senior. Hitting 176 on the year, batting or playing at first base and batting in the number eight hole for Gonzaga. And here is Wood looking in. Here's the pitch. Nyquist a swing and a miss. Looked like the pitch might have been up a little bit. Yeah, Woody definitely got away with one right there. Up, up in the zone for ball one. Got him to swing through it though. Nyquist also good uh, power. He's got three home runs on the year. Big kid. And nine RBIs. He played Utah. Good job by Noah Hill to jump in front of that curveball in the dirt. Nyquist had a big home run against Utah late in that ball game to kind of um, 
propel the Bulldogs over the Utes on Tuesday night. And Gonzaga just stayed down and taken on the uh, Cougars here in Provo on this Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. And here is the 1 1 pitch outside for ball two. Mark Makdoff is the head coach of Gonzaga. 16th year as head coach. He's been there a total of 29 years. 450 wins. That's a lot of wins. But 363 losses. That's a lot of losses. Yeah. That's what happens when you coach that long. He's a really good coach. Really able to develop pitching on that staff, as we've seen throughout the years. Here's the ball hit down to the third baseman. He'll throw to second. Clough over to McNew, and the Bulldogs are retired in the inning. No runs, two hits, no errors, one man left. We are through one and a half. No score, Gonzaga and BYU on your W.TV New Skin BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the New Skin BYU Sports Network. Jackson Clough steps in for the Cougars. A 1-2 count on Clough as we come back to action here at Larry Miller Field in Provo, Utah. Cold... Uh, night here uh, temperature about 40 degrees at game time and just going to go down from there no wind though fortunately or very little wind as Clough fouls that pitch off and the count uh, remains at one and two Clough Kringlin and McDo the three scheduled hitters for BYU Mason Wells the young freshman out of Spokane retired the Cougars in order in the first pitch to Clough is over for it call strike Three, so that's his second strikeout of the evening. Yeah, good slider right there. Able to get Jackson to kind of roll his front shoulder and let that go for strike three. King Kringlin steps in, average of 292 as he comes to the plate. Senior out of Cedar City, Utah. No home runs, six RBIs on the year for Keaton. And the pitch is outside, Bowen. And talking to Coach Littlewood after... Uh, the last game, I know he was impressed with the senior leadership, and they've kind of had the highs and the lows. You know, a couple of years ago, the Cougars really, really played well, got to the regional, and last year, wheels came off a little bit, so I yeah. think this senior's kind of, you know, I'm not sure you can answer this, Tuck, but uh, kind of took a, maybe a little more important role in this year's team. Yeah, they really have. They've really just kind of taken pride in the fact that they don't want to end their career having a year like the last year and just come out and play hard, have fun, be great leaders, and, and see where it takes them. Two balls, one strike to Kringlin. Pitches up a little bit high and outside. You know, Mason Wells does a pretty good job for not a very big guy of really hiding the baseball. He really does, yeah. Kind of rolls his front shoulder yeah. and kind of just protects it. Kind of comes out of nowhere at you. Pitch to Kringlin over for a strike. Three and two to the Cougar senior. He'll be followed by DJ McNew. Pitch to Kringlin. The ball's grounded foul at the plate. Came up and off of Kringlin, which makes it a dead ball. So count will uh, stay full. But boy, you can see that ball hit right off yeah, just dead. above his knee. Not a night that you want to be hitting foul balls off your leg. And Kringlin didn't even show any any kind of emotion there. No, he didn't. Pitches outside, ball four. Cougars get their first base runner. Yeah, that's a really good at bat there by Keaton. Just being selective and patient. You know, uh, Wells came into this game with nine strikeouts in seven innings, but he also had six walks. So he's he's a guy that he'll try to get you to swing and miss. And if you can be selective. You know, you can get a chance to, to get some walks and put yourself in position to score some runs. And through the first inning plus, I think this umpire has proven that he's got a pretty small zone, so you can have a little more confidence as a hitter when you're taking a pitch like that. That pitch is up high to McNew for ball one. Yeah, and these are umpires. I think there's only one of them that we've had before that I can remember having, so um, at least in my tenure here. Um, but uh, I think Rakos, I think the home plate umpire I've heard of, but I can't, I don't know. Don't recall the other ones. That ball's fouled off by McNew down the right field line. Cougars off to their second best start in the history of BYU baseball. They've won six straight, 10 of their last 11. 12 wins, three losses on the year. 
They lead the conference in uh, in the preseason record. Although there are seven teams that are in uh, have winning records in the conference, yeah. which I think has got to be a first. Yeah, it's awesome. It's really awesome to see this, a bunch of teams winning games right now and beating really good teams. Two balls and a strike to McNew. Pitch to DJ. That's up high, ball three. Well, and really there's only one team right now that's been struggling, and that's Santa Clara. Santa Clara hasn't really started hot, but they've got a bunch of talent and can really turn it on. Everyone else has really again, been, been doing really well. Remember last year, Santa Clara was the team at early yeah, that was yeah. just on fire. They really were. Three balls and a strike. McNew big swing and a miss. And the count goes to three and two. Yeah, I like that hack on three and one. Try to leave the yard and take a two nothing lead here to start the game. Now with full count, you just got to battle. McNew steps back in. Wells from the stretch. Here's the pitch. McNew hammers one into left field, base hit. First hit for the Cougars, and BYU will have runners at first and second base with one man out, and Mitch McIntyre coming up. Yeah, good full count swing there by McNew. Got a fastball running in on his hands. He's able to get through there and just hit a nice hard line drive single through the six hole. McIntyre's a guy you just kind of wait to start uh, really being more consistent at the plate hitting 233 so far yeah his swings though the last week have been really good brent so i i think he's starting to get going i really do sophomore out of tooele and the pitch is up high ball one so byu here in the second with a walk and a single and threatening with a runner at first and second base and McIntyre stepping back in. Mitchie, a left-handed hitter going against the left-handed offerings of Mason Wells. And that ball's hammered to center field right at the center fielder who makes the play for the out. Kringlin, no chance to go anywhere and really a good at bat there by Mc McIntyre. Yeah, I mean, you can't ask for anything more than that than hit a hard line drive. And he just smashes one right back up the middle, right to the center fielder. Good swing by Mitch. Noah Hill now steps in. Cougar catcher, been fantastic offensively this year, hitting an even 400 with five RBIs. Noah Hill, 45 at bats, 18 hits. As the right-handed hitting catcher out of Flower Mound, Texas, will step in. And Noah fouls this one down the right field line, up and out of play. Yeah, Noah early on had clutch hits. All five of those RBIs he had early on, Brent, were with two outs. Early on to, went to, to take leads or tie games. So he's had a really good year so far. I'm happy to see him. You know, a senior that's really hadn't got a ton of time in his career that's really just earned this, and it's nice to see him get an opportunity and do really well. Just a great young man. Noah Hill stepping in, trying to put the Cougars on top here. And that pitch is up high for ball one, one and one. Interesting uh, defensively, they play the right fielder and the right center gap and really deep, and the left fielder is playing almost down the line. There's a huge gap in left center. And down the right field line. Yeah. The way they're Yeah, you hit that ball down aligned. the right field line, it's going to get to the wall. And they've pretty much done that against the entire lineup. Yeah, they have. Ball and a strike. Here's the pitch. He'll fouls it straight back. You don't see the... The crazy shifts, anyway, as much this year as we saw last year in collegiate baseball, but I'm sure some teams, I think, like to do it more than others. Yeah, definitely. Some teams are really about it, um, and it's interesting to see how often those hurt you more than they actually help you. You know, you hit a routine ball to where they normally would be, and it turns into a single. Ball and two strikes. Wells pitch. And Noah Hill fouls another one down the right field side. Yeah, I'd like to see him just kind of flare one over the first baseman here. He'd probably get all the way to the yep. wall and score two runs. Yeah, McNew runs well at first base. Kringlin at second base, and Hill steps back in with a 1-2 count. Wells again from the stretch, and here's the pitch. That ball hammered foul again down the right side. 
And now that right fielder is slowly starting to creep Brent into his normal territory. Now he's moving. Yeah, right? Coach he's, is moving him back. Yeah. He's like, Coach, I'm just making an adjustment here. Ball and two strikes to Hill. The looper right side first baseman trying to make the play wow. he made the catch in fair territory i don't know how he caught that ball he kind of got turned around a yes, little he bit did. and uh, was his own worst enemy he was able to flash the glove out at the last second to make the play for the out we're through two no score gonzaga and byu on the w.tv new skin byu sports network this is byu baseball on the new skin byu sports network now back to the ballpark and Brent Norton. We go to the third inning. And Jordan Wood on the hill for the Cougars. He's given up no runs on a couple of base hits. And the first pitch over for a call strike to Carson Brashears, the second baseman for Gonzaga. He's the number nine hitter in the lineup for the Bulldogs. There's a pop foul out of play. And the count uh, quickly 0-2. Yeah, and he's a guy that you want to attack and and get him out because Yak on deck is a really clutch type hitter that can blow an inning open. Yake, actually. Here's the 0-2. Well outside for a ball. Jordan Wood, uh, 6'4", 199, Friendswood, Texas product. He has been stellar for BYU in his career. And the 1-2 pitch by fouled out of play. Boy, that ball just tied him up. Brashear is very fortunate to get a piece of that. Yeah, you could tell he was just trying to fight that and slap it the other way. That was a really good location by Wood. Boy, these night like tonight, you hate those things off the handle. Yes, you do. Anything that's not on the barrel hurts. It hurts. One ball, two strikes. Here's Wood from the windup and the pitch, and that's up high. Four, ball two. Brashear's a 152 average, has a couple of RBIs on the year. This Bulldog team does not run much. They only have five stolen bases. 2-2 two, two pitch up high, ball three. Cougars right now, that's one of their strengths. They've got, uh, what, 22 out of 23 steal. 22 steals and 23 attempts this year. Pretty good stats right there. Ball fouled up and out of play. 90 mile an hour fastball there from Jordan Wood. And Brashears will climb back in. And Wood gets the sign from Noah Hill, and here is the pitch. Down low, ball four. Yeah, that's a good at bat there by Brashears. I mean, you're a 135 hitter. You're leading off the inning in the third, and you just got to find a way to get on base, and he did that. It's one that Jordan Wood would be frustrated with himself not to attacking him and making him earn that. And now you turn the order over to their, their hot hitters. Ernie Yake steps in. He is uh, the shortstop tonight. Ball fouled down the first base side. Yake, a very good third baseman. Boy, we saw him s oh. turn some plays last year he here. Was so good last year as a freshman at third. Yeah. Played very well defensively, and as you'd mentioned, a pretty clutch hitter hitting 277 coming in. As Yake uh, steps back in. Pitch from Wood is fouled up and out of play. I think the most impressive stat for Yake there in the leadoff spot is he has 52 at-bats and he's only struck out twice. So it's a guy that you know that's just going to put the ball in play. And uh, he only has one walk as a leadoff hitter, but uh, he doesn't swing and miss very often. 0-2, Brashears at first base. Nobody out here. And the pitch is fouled out of play. So no balls and two strikes now again to uh, Yake. He's followed by Guthrie Morrison. Yeah, if you're Wood, you're just trying to get yourself a nice ground ball, double play ball type finish here. 0-2. Oh, Fouled off again. 
Mike Littlewood, head coach of the Cougars uh, in his seventh campaign, 191 wins, uh, 146 losses. That includes uh, WAC championships or West Coast Conference championships in 2016 and 17. As the Cougars off to a tremendous start. Pitch hits him, came in a hit yake. So he'll move down to first base after being hit by a pitch. Yeah, just hung on to that slider too long and just hit him on the back foot. Hate to hit a guy 0-2, but now the Zags got themselves in a perfect situation here. A nice bunt probably situation here for Morrison. Morrison, the center fielder. Hitting 298 on the year. Has uh, five RBIs. And he will step in from the right side. McIntyre, or Clough at third base. And just in front of the bag. Looking for the bunt. Sue charging hard from first base. And there's a bunt. Picked up by Wood. Good bunt. His only play to first base. So Wood makes the play. Throws to first base. DJ McNew for the out. One man out. And runners at second and third. And that will bring uh, Austin Pinarini. Well, really good execution there by the Zags. You know, if he bunts that to first with Sue coming in, he probably gets the force out at third. But uh, made Jordan go fill it off the mound there and not hit hard enough to where he could get the force out at third and got the advancement. Put him in a good situation here to score here in the third inning. Penarini grounded out his first time up. Open stance to the plate for the left-handed hitter, and the pitch popped up. Shallow right field. Brock Hill coming hard. He'll call McNew off, and Brock Hill has a tremendous arm. They're not going to try to run on him. Great so job. big out right there as Pinarini tried to jump on the first pitch and just popped it up. Fantastic job by Wood there to get that, that shallow pop up. If you're watching on the double, you can see uh, Brock Hill came in, made the strong throw, even though I think everybody in the ballpark uh, knew that uh, – Carson Brashears wasn't going anywhere from third base. Now this is a big spot here because now you got Sullivan up, who's their guy. Six home runs, 11 RBIs. You do have first base open, but uh, this is a big situation here in the third inning. Flew out to Brock Hill his first time up there. And the first pitch down, low ball one. You can hear those crowd mics. It's hard to tell what team is cheering because they're both right over the dugouts. And so... Uh, both teams are really animated right now, which is awesome. First conference game of the year. you got to be excited. One ball, no strikes. Two men out, two men on. And here is the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. Good uh, slider there. And uh, Ryan Sullivan just swung right over the top of it. Brent, how big does it say Sullivan is? Says he's 6'5", 240. Yeah, that's a, that's a man right there. My goodness. One ball, one strike. Cougars playing back in the infield and have him actually shaded a little bit over into right center. Good pitch, swing and a miss. I think another breaking pitch, and Sullivan just trying to chase that one and missed it badly. Yeah, good slider running away. A little action there at third base. The runner at third kind of maybe thought it was strike three, and he actually like turned and handed his helmet to the coach and then realized he had to dive back. Ball and two strikes. Got to make a really good pitch right here, up one, two. Has to be your pitch only. Sullivan steps in. Wood from the stretch. Here's the pitch. A swinging strike three. Same pitch, same result. Sullivan swings and misses it a pitch off the plate. No runs, no hits, no errors. Two runners left. We're through two and a half. No score. Gonzaga and BYU on the W.TV New Skin BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Brent Norton. Carson Matthews steps in for the Cougars. We go to the bottom of the third inning. 1-1 one, one the count on Matthews. That pitch is down low. Somebody needs to tell that home plate umpire to give us 90 seconds between yeah. half innings. We were talking about Mason Wells. Almost before that ball was into the catcher's mitt and the strikeout, he was halfway to the mound. This kid doesn't waste any time. There's a little looper into left field, and Matthews with a... 
leadoff single here in the third inning for the Cougars. Yeah, got jammed a little bit there, but strong enough to be able to muster it up there into left field for leadoff si single. Great start here for the Cougs in the bottom half of the third. Jelilich now steps in for BYU. He struck out looking his first time up on a 3-2 strike. I'll tell you what, though, I really liked Jelilich's at bat, though. He was very selective and patient. Jelilich pops it up, third baseman, unable to make the plays that uh, just dropped foul. It popped up in the air. I thought he might have a chance to come in and make the catch, but it uh, landed foul just in front of him. And, and believe me, Danny Jelilich was uh, bunting as much there for a base hit as oh, he yeah. was a sacrifice. Oh, absolutely. Anytime Danny's going to bunt, it's not for a sack because his speed is game-changing. To where if he puts a good bunt down, he's almost safe every time. I think he's three for three on bunts this year, and they've been actually really, really good bunts. Third baseman are just about even with the bag. There's a quick move to first base, and uh, Matthews back in safely. Yeah, and Carson was kind of leaning a little bit there on the replay. Well, it's the first time they've seen yeah. the move from Wells. On one, the count. And here's Wells' pitch again. Jelilich down the third baseline. Third baseman up with it. He'll throw to first just in time to get Jelilich, but the runner moves up. Yeah, good sack bunt there. As the bunt was just a little too hard. He softens that up just a little bit. He'll beat that out. Good play by the third baseman. Just a half a step ahead of him. Brian Sue now steps in. Brian, first baseman. Popped one up to the second baseman his first time at the plate. Brian hitting uh, 383 coming into the ball game. And the first pitch to Sue is over for call strike one. A good pitch to hit right there. Sue wants that one back. Great job by Wells to get ahead. No balls and a strike. Matthews at second base. Would be the potential go-ahead run for the Cougars here in the third. As Brian Sue back into the box, and there's a line drive. Third baseman wow. dives, makes the catch. Wow. Uh, Brett Harris, good play. Two men out, and Brock Hill steps in. All you can do is hit balls hard, and he did that. And My goodness, great play by the third baseman right there. Harris did a fantastic job diving in that six hole and, and saving a run. That'll bring up a Brock Hill who flew out to deep right field his first time up there. And again, right fielder pulled well over into the alley in right center field and very deep, much deeper than the center fielder. Oh, yeah, he is playing probably five feet from the warning track in right center, which is the reason why that ball was caught. This should have been well, off the wall. And he's 20 or 30 feet deeper than the center yeah, fielder. Yeah, he really playing. is. He really is. And the left fielder is playing probably the shallowest, which is interesting. One and all the count. Pitch to Hale is over for a strike. 347 down the lines here at Larry Miller Park. Uh, 380 in the power rallies in left center. 388 in right center. And 402 to straightaway center field. So uh, not a home run ballpark. As Brock Hale steps back in. And that pitch is up a little bit high. Ball two. Well, they do have first base open, and it'll be interesting to see if they're going to attack Brock here or if they'll like to face the lefty on deck. So far, he's been coming right at him. I'd like to uh, thank our friends at the W.TV, also BYU Radio, and the BYU Sports Network for their uh, fine work. Pitch is over for a strike to Hale. That might have been a pitch that uh, Brock would like to have back. Yeah, it was a really good pitch right there. Fastball about knee high and in. And Brock is definitely a low ball hitter. Two balls, two strikes. Brock Hale coming off an all West Coast Conference season last year. And here's a 2-2. Hale pops it up, foul out of play.
Brock Hill, uh, again, one of those seniors that's had uh, just a tremendous impact on this program since coming to BYU out of Mesa, Arizona. And the pitch to Hale, that ball is grounded just foul down the third baseline. Foul by a, a foot or so. Well, just like the Zags had a chance to take the lead in the top half of the third, Cougs have a chance to take one here in the bottom half. You'd like to see your senior leader get a big clutch hit right here. Hale steps in, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner at second base. No score, bottom of the third, and the pitch way outside for a ball. Well, he's going to go with his best pitch right here. Full count, first base open with the lefty on deck. You're going to definitely say, okay, hey, I'm going to give you my best strikeout pitch right here and see if I can get a strikeout or, or, or a weak ground out. Three and two. Pitch. Ball hit pretty well. Center fielder coming over. He's going to get there and make the catch for the out. So Hale again hits the ball hard, but right at the center fielder Morrison for out number three. That'll do it for the Cougars. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left. We're through three. No score, Gonzaga and BYU on your W.TV New Skin BYU Sports Network. 